As the regulator becomes more present in the insurance industry, the role of qualifications within the broking sector is looming large. Bodies such as the Chartered Insurance Institute are pushing this up broker's agendas while the government is targeting apprenticeships. With this in mind, I'm delighted to say I'm joined in the studio by Alliance's Neil Clutterbuck to discuss the future of qualifications in the broking industry, apprenticeships and how insurers can work with brokers to ensure they have the support they need. Welcome to the studio, Neil. Thank you. Start off with, do you think the view that brokers don't invest in their staff for fear they'll be poached by rivals is outdated? And if so, what's behind that change in mindset? Um, that's an interesting one for me. I'm not sure if I ever believed that uh, brokers weren't investing in the staff and, and their quality of professional development. I think really what I am convinced of, though, is that brokers are continuing to make significant investments, and that's growing year on year. And for me, I think that's being driven by a number of factors. Firstly, the regulator. Secondly, I think increased competition is one of the features that's driving the desire to find some form of competitive advantage. And what better way than to do that through uh, technical excellence and through training and professional development. And thirdly, I think the customer demands it. It's no longer good enough to not be professional, to not have qualifications. And so that demand in itself, I think, is helping drive this continued professional development across the broker market. Do you think that apprenticeship schemes figure on brokers' radars now? I do, and I've had some first-hand experience of that quite recently. I can't think of a better way for brokers to snaffle young talent into the market. Um, so from my perspective, and indeed from brokers' viewpoints, I think that they're a fantastic opportunity to take young talent, help shape them in their career, and really give them the opportunity to plot out a career path for the future. Personally, I've, I've had some direct involvement uh, with some broker networks who've been investing in that area. And what really did stagger me was one, the level of investment the brokers themselves were making and the commitment they were making to young talent. And secondly, the quality and calibre of the people that they were able to recruit through those schemes and the opportunities for them to then develop fantastic careers in this profession. Do you think that the CII qualifications are held in as high esteem by brokers as they are by insurers? And is there anything insurers should be doing to help penetration there? I think they are held in high esteem by the broking sector. And what I'm seeing is more and more investment by brokers to ensure that their staff are gaining CII qualifications. But to your question, I really do think there is more that uh, the insurance profession and insurers can do to support the, uh, the broker community in that regard. If I could give you a couple of examples, the uh, Alliance has been working with uh, something they call the uh, Broker Academy for some considerable time. Um, and that's been one of these opportunities for us to offer uh, training, development, learning opportunities to some 700 brokers across the, uh, the, across the country. In addition, we've also been running a specialist uh, scholarship program which enables us to offer uh, broker-nominated staff the opportunity to accelerate CII diploma qualification. And in the last four years, we've put some 400 staff through that. And it's been a very successful method of building relationships but also enhancing that learning opportunity. And I think looking for opportunities like that is something that all insurers can look to do for the future. Given the connected world that we work in, do you think the way that training and professional development courses are delivered needs to change? And if so, how can insurers help there? I think they do need to change and in some instances I think we're starting to see those changes take effect. If we think about what goes on in the profession, broadly speaking we're time poor inundated with information. I think part of the challenge for us is to give people who want to learn and to continue their professional development bite-sized opportunities to, to absorb that learning, whether it be through using electronic media, podcasts, webinars, but equally to give them experiential learning on the job as well. And I think it's the combination of learning styles that people can then deploy and use to suit their own learning approach. That's where the key to successful development lies. That's all we have time for now, but thank you for your time here. If you'd like to read more about training and professional development, please check out the latest instalment of Alliance's ongoing Expertise A to Z series in post, online, in print and in the digital edition on the 18th of June. That's all from me for now. Goodbye. <laughs>